separate orders required to be passed practically after giving the facts. So that is going to affect many other projects of DLF. With the compact in this DLF case upholding the consumer is indeed the king, many aggrieved buyers are hoping to take this route as umbrage against their builder. I caught up with the council for the DLF Magnolia Buyer Association to find out more about consumer rights. I began by asking him how buyers of a project must start by setting up a legal association or society. You see, uh, uh, the association needs to be for, uh, formed under the Societies Act. There is a Societies Act in place. For example, in Haryana, there is now a special Societies Act only which covers associations per se all over, whether it's uh, an association of apartment owners or whether it's a society otherwise formed for some fine arts or culture or anything. So you have to apply, make your bylaws, there is a minimum number of people who are required for formation of the societies, seven in some cases. If the society is large, you have to have uh, collegiums and then uh, a different, uh, you can divide the societies of 350 members each. But uh, that is only in Haryana. In other states also, societies can be formed under the Societies Act. There is a whole procedure which has to be gone through and more important is you should have a bylaw. Mr. Khanna, many consumers are looking at the DLF case with a new lease of hope that, you know, one day they will also get justice against the builder. Tell us what convinced you to move the CCI. It's the first such case against the competition watchdog. DLF has been reiterating that this is beyond the CCI's jurisdiction, that the CCI is not the right forum. The size of DLF is so huge and it was so dominant in Gurgaon that it did not get affected by the pricing of the other, other, other developers also, or the other competition that was in the market. It could do whatever it wanted on its own. Now, if you are a dominant, if you, if you are working with a dominant developer, then you may have a reason to go under the Competition Act to the Competition Commission of India. But in cases where you are not such a big company or where the builder is a small builder, the only remedy per se that uh, an, a, a lottie or a customer would have is to approach the National, uh, uh, the na uh, national Commission or the State com uh, Consumer uh, Forum or the District Consumer Forum, depending on the fiduciary value of this whole uh, claim they may have against the builder. And for all those viewers that are planning legal action against their builders, can you enlighten them with the kind of challenges you and the other two DLF buyer associations had to overcome? In any litigation uh, of this type and uh, being led by owners or allottees or allottees whose uh, apartments have been cancelled, the foremost thing is that they need to stay motivated throughout. It's, it's an exercise of collection of huge statistical data which may not be easily available. This was one of the big challenges. The information that had to be brought in to really, uh, you know, uh, plead, make your pleadings in this case was uh, huge. And the gentlemen involved in our case were very, very motivated till the end. They knew that they, according to them, a wrong had been done and they wanted to fight that. Now, this really doesn't happen in all the cases. And in most of the cases, you would realize that the developer or the builder takes advantage of that. Because at the end, only two people are standing fighting this whole institution. To stay together is very important, very, very important. Otherwise, it's very difficult. And how do you react to the compact disagreeing with the CCI and ruling there's no need for DLF to change the buyer agreements that the Competition Act as it stands today came into force on 20th of May 2009 and therefore cannot be implemented retrospectively for all the agreements that DLF has signed in 2006. Do you and your clients see this part of the verdict as a loss? By and large, yes. By and large, yes, it is uh, a loss for, for, for if I were to give my own opinion, I would, I would only say that this was an occasion now to put in place a, a very simple template by a legal authority to say that these particular clauses need to be inside, uh, you know, modified in different situations and transactions, but the abusive clauses as, for example, the interest which I have to pay and which the developer will pay or the holding charges or many other charges or the right of cancellation in every clause should not be there. You see, I, I can uh, in such clauses, a consumer can really not lift his head against the developer or say, listen, you are wrong. 
because the only remedy that was left in these clauses was that you exit, take the money from us. The, the developer would say, we are ready to pay you. If, you. if that is the way you want, you have to leave or we will give you 9% interest. The compact, like the CCI, has stopped short of saying there is a nexus between DLF and bureaucrats. It has, though, hinted at it at several instances of the verdict. Are you and your clients now considering a criminal case? We have still to decide, you know, uh, and that is not for me to answer. These people will really have to go that far in that fight uh, if they want to. Uh, but uh, there are enough indications in, the, in this order which show that... Uh, the states knew what was happening and the state let it happen and uh, it was after the uh, uh, you know the multi, uh, the extra floors had already been built that the sanctions came in so so dlf was so dominant enough to start uh, uh, you know keep on building these extra 10 floors uh, without the state's interference that was one of the arguments which was uh, uh, from our side but uh, what compact said is that uh, we are not going to go into the jurisdiction of the state isn't it time now, Mr. Khanna, that there's some law that bans builders from increasing flows, from increasing FARs once third-party rights have been created? Yes, that law is already there. You see, that is why I, I wanted to, uh, although the uh, judgment in DLF has not touched upon the Apartments Act, the Apartments Act itself gives a lot of right to the uh, allottees. And there are not one judgment, there are many judgments of various high courts which say that you cannot just have the right to keep on building or change the land area or add 10 floors and uh, this thing. But let me just touch the point of the Apartments Act, uh, which is applicable in many states. That itself creates a lot many rights, right from the day I become a consumer uh, uh, or a customer of uh, the builder. And once the builder has declared a certain condominium area and said that I am going to make 500 flats there and I start paying against the one of the flats in there, the common areas are fixed, the uh, facilities there are announced, everything is announced, there is obviously a service being provided to me to make all that and deliver to me and my rights and interests are there from day one. So if the builder thereafter is going to change uh, all that, it is going to be to my detriment. My rights will get uh, affected and, and that is not allowed. And there are many judgments of the High Court which I know of where uh, uh, these were challenged and the courts have said that you can't keep on changing areas or the facilities and keep adding. It's not a fair thing to do. It would rather be illegal. This is a very important point you're making. Most buyers don't know about it, that there are indeed laws banning builders from increasing the size of a project after it's been launched. Let me take an example that a particular condominium is marketed by a builder and uh, he says, I'm going to build this in, let's say, 10 acres. And after everything is built, he says, no, no, I, I, I'm going to do it in nine acres now. Or in those 10 acres, now I will put another 50% uh, uh, more uh, flats. So I, uh, my rights, uh, are. Go when are they going to get crystallized? Because I do not know. When is he going to make the changes? So therefore, there are judgments which you say that you cannot change my crystallized rights like this. And my rights do get crystallized the day I go to him to buy a flat and start paying. Tips there on options available for you to take action against a builder. On that note, we're going to sip into a short break. On the other side, we'll tell you how the empowerment of consumer rights in Maharashtra has been delayed.